Good morning, Impact Church. How are we doing? Woo! We are in the house of the Lord, right? Thank you guys for giving me the update. It's three, two, one. Pastor Hal ha or Pastor Anthony hasn't moved that fast in a long, long time. So, hey, there's a beautiful verse when I woke up this morning, and I just want to read it to you guys because. God put a, a dream in this goofball's heart. And three years ago, and uh, this happened. And that's, God is just so faithful. So we're going to sing to him. But in uh, Psalm 103, verse 22, it says, Praise the Lord, everything he has created. See, he created this. Well, I didn't. We didn't. We're just part of it. This is everything in all his kingdom. This is his kingdom. And we're just building it for him. It says, let all that I am praise the Lord. So I want you guys to stand today. I want you to sing your hearts out today. I want you to praise the Lord because he's created this. Amen? Amen. Amen? We give him the praise and glory. Amen? God bless. All right. Good morning, church. How's everyone doing today? Good to see you all. Today we're celebrating three years of impact. Let's give God some praise today. Hallelujah. So I want you guys to shout out, God is good. All the time. And all the time, God is good. Amen. So we're going to just sing that today. We're going to sing, you are good. Let's give him some praise today. Here we go. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Nice and simple. Let's sing that again. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Let's sing people. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you. For who you are, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you. For who you are, you are good. Hallelujah, let's give him some praise today. God, we thank you that we're here in worship. God, I pray that you're glorified. Here we go. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Let's thank him for his mercy today. Sing that again. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. All of us people. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. We worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. You are good. If you guys believe it, let's sing it out. Here 
Here we go. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good. One more time. You are good. All the time, all the time, you are good. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you. For who you are, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you. For who you are, let's sing for who you are, for who you are. For who you are, you are good. Hallelujah. Give him a shout of praise, say hallelujah. God, we thank you so much, God, that through you, God, we are free to worship. We're free to dance. We're free to praise. There's no chains on us anymore, Amen. God, we declare today, God, we speak out into existence, God, that we are free worshipers. Let's sing that today. Free to dance. I'm free to dance and sing. I'm free to lift my hands and worship. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Hallelujah. I'm free to dance and sing. I'm free to lift my hands and worship. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Let's sing that out. I'm free to dance and sing. Free to lift my hands and worship. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. I'm free to dance and sing. Free to lift my hands and worship, Lord, I'm free, Lord, I'm free. I'm a free worshiper, I'm a free worshiper, I'm a free worshiper, Lord, I'm free. I'm a free worshiper, I'm a free worshiper, I'm a free worshiper. Lord, I'm free. Hallelujah. All right, church, if this is a new song for you, the lyrics are nice and simple, just the same lines over and over. But let's sing out to them. Try to sing it out. Here we go. I'm free to dance and sing. I'm free to lift my hands and worship. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. I'm free to dance and sing. I'm free to lift my hands and worship, Lord, I'm free, Lord, I'm free. I'm free to dance and sing, I'm free to lift my hands and worship, Lord, I'm free, Lord, I'm free. I'm free to dance and sing, free to lift my hands and worship, Lord, I'm free. If you're excited, sing it out. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. Lord, I'm free. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. Lord, I'm free. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper, hallelujah. I'm a free worshiper. Lord, I'm free. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. 
I'm a free worshiper. Lord, I'm free. Say, thank God. Thank God I'm free. And I'll never be bound again. Amen. Thank God I'm free. And I'll never be bound again. If you believe it, sing it out. Thank God I'm free. And I'll never be bound again. I thank God I'm free. And I'll never be bound again. Cause I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. Lord, I'm free. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. Lord, I'm free. Declare, Lord, I'm free. 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 I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. Lord, I'm free. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. Lord, I'm free. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we give you praise this morning, God. We lift your name and your name alone on high today, God. God, we declare today, God, that you and you alone deserve the glory, God. So we lift our hands and worship God and worship you today, Jesus. Hallelujah. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands and worship. As we praise your holy name, you deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. You deserve, you deserve the glory and the honor. So, Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. See that from the top. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship 
as we praise your holy name. You deserve the glory. Yes, you do, God. And the honor. So we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. Hallelujah. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Let's make sure to keep telling him that. There's no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Hallelujah. There is no one else like you. There's no one else like him. I don't know about you guys, but I've tried a lot of things in my life. I've looked in different places to find happiness and love and, I, and mercy and grace. There's no one like him. There's no one that can break down barriers. There's no one that can take down walls like him. There's only him. And let's give him praise and mercy right now. And grace, I mean. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, at this time, we usually do a big impact hug. Hallelujah. Oh, man. We usually do big impact hugs and stuff like that, but we can't do that today. So do me. Yeah, everybody stretch your arms out. Air hug. Whoa. All right. Hey, we're going to show a quick video and get ready for uh, for first. on uh, Facebook. Good morning. Hey, um, if you're a first-time guest here today, let us know before you leave. I have a special gift for you. We actually have a special gift for everybody that leaves here today. So when you leave, we're going out that door, so don't forget to get your gift. Uh, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. We'd love to have you as part of our family. So we just praise the Lord with our praise and worship, but there's many different ways to do that, right? And uh, the other way we do that here is through our tithes and offerings. We are big believers in tithes and offerings. So get your tithes and get your offerings ready, please. There's a couple different ways to give an impact. You can mail in at our P.O. Box, 155 Maywood, Illinois, or you can go online uh, to our PayPal account and, and give that way at impact-church-maywood.org. Or today, if you are giving an offering uh, at that time, we have our uh, offering treasure box, I call it, over to the left of us that you can get up at any time and just kind of put it in there. But there's a beautiful verse, again, from Psalms. I love Psalms. I don't know about you guys. I, I, I just like reading them. It says in Psalm 21, 26, 
Some people are always greedy for more, but the godly love to give. And I'm getting emotional because I don't know if you guys know, but in the last six months, seven months, our church alone, and this is including Hope Church, our church alone has fed almost 12,000 people because of your donations, because of your offerings. Because you guys aren't greedy. You're willing to give. You might take at times, but you guys are always willing to give a hand, give something. And it's amazing to watch what this church can do. All right? So uh, please lift up your offerings today. We're going to pray over them. We're going to send them a Father God. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your kindness and your love. Thank you for the provisions that you provide, Father God. I thank you for these people, these impacts that impact this community and Maywood and Broadview and uh, just in the Proviso Township, Father God. What you do with a little stretches so far, Lord. Let us be good stewards at impact of your offering today, Lord. Let us be able to help your widows and orphans and the people in need at the right time, Father God. Bless the people giving. Give them double blessings. In Jesus' mighty name. Man, all right. If anytime you guys want to get up and give offerings, you're more than welcome. So a couple of announcements, and then we're going to get started. Um, somebody, oh, there's my, oh, there you are. All right. I was going to say somebody go get Tracy, but she's here. So we got small groups starting this week, Thursday night at the Go Big Accounting Building. Please do me a favor, sign up just so I know. We're also doing it on Zoom. So if you're not comfortable and you want to stay at home, I'll get you the Zoom link. I, but I need you to register so I know how many people we're going to have there and on Zoom, okay? Um, that starts at 7 o'clock. If, if you've been hurt and you still have a, a loss in your heart or you're grieving something, this book and this small group is going to change your life. Man, and I thank you because you gave me the book. Pastor Hal is going to come up in a minute. But he gave me the book to read, and it's an amazing uh, study and I, I'm so looking forward to it right now because I think a lot of us are hurt and we're lost right now. And this is going to fill that void. Jesus is going to fill your void. I, I just know it. So, and then Thursday night also at 4 o'clock, we're starting prayer on the streets again. This is something that I've been yearning to do. I miss it. Until it gets cold, we're going to do this, okay? Prayer on the street, right? I, I'm, we're usually facing this way. So right here on the corner, a ninth in Madison, we'll be up there praying from 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock. We'll have a break, go get dinner, and then we'll do small group, okay? With that said, I am so honored, and it's my privilege to introduce this man. Some of you guys know him. Some of you guys know him, him and his wife. But Pastor Hal, can you guys, and Don, please come up here. <laughs> Pastor Hal and Don, I come from... Hope Church LaGrange. It used to be called LCA. And in the back corner one day, it wasn't even your preaching. I hate to tell you that. But it was the <laughs> song, Amazing Grace. But you were talking about salvation. And I don't have a clue what you said, but I heard God say, you're, you're saved. And all I did was look up and I saw you. And you came and prayed with me. If it wasn't for this man and his family, a lot of what I do... I wouldn't be doing. And you guys got to realize how much we love you. Babe, I forgot the gift. So I was going to give you your gift at the end, but since you're going to give us, <laughs> it's on the chair right there. Okay, so we're going to trade gifts, I guess. So we have a little bag for you. And, uh, and so that's for you. Oh, that's for me. So I'm going to hand over the mic to you, you and preach your heart out, brother. Can I pray over you real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Father God, I just, we just lift up Pastor Hell right now. We pray for total healing in your, in your body, Father. We pray in Jesus' name that he, he had feeling last week and was able to jump and start running again, Father. These muscles just, uh, they you, just Jesus. come back miraculously more than before, Father God. That these, they're not dead bones. They're alive bones. Why? Because you live in them. You're Amen. not a dead God. You're Amen. a living God. And you have the power to heal anytime. And, Lord, we are waiting, and we know expectantly that you are healing, my brother. 
in Christ right now. Father God, anoint his words as he goes to preach. Let them not fall on deaf ear, but open ears, Father God. Let these words transform and cause miracles today, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. Before you're seated, um, there's my, there's it all. <laughs> um, we just want to congratulate Pastor Anthony and Tracy and all the leadership team and all the volunteers and all of Impact Church on your three-year anniversary. Let's praise the Lord. Look what the Lord has done. Praise God. And um, Dawn gave some flowers to Tracy and um, from one pastor's wife to another. Uh, I, I hope you know hope you know you have the most loving pastors in the world. Uh, everybody loves them wherever I go. So uh, we also have a gift for you to, uh, to have some fun. So we, we love you dearly. We miss you, but we're so thankful for what God has done in these three years. All right, I'm going to let everybody be seated. <clears throat> and I did want to say two, uh, just two things, Tracy, before you go. I think, are you going back with the kids? Um, I had two pictures for both of you. Um, as you now, as you move forward, uh, the first was uh, the. I saw that you went fishing. These two have been fishing a lot with their kids, <laughs> and you got a you got a whopper. I mean, a real one. And you have the pi the picture to prove it, the photo. But the Lord just wanted me to encourage you. The next season is is fishing for souls. All these precious souls throughout. Uh, you know, this whole footprint around this place that there are still many who need to know the Savior. And so that you would all go at it, that you would be fishing for men and women and really impact the community and live up to that great name. And then the second was, you know, I'm so thrilled to see what Impact Church did during the pandemic. So many churches just kind of hunkered down. But you guys actually rose up. And you, uh, along with so many other churches, uh, you know, you brought food and supplies to people who desperately needed it and deeply appreciated it. And uh, just the Lord kind of showed me the next, another picture for the next season is spiritual food. Yeah, that you'll, you'll always be practical knowing you two and knowing impact, but uh, also the spiritual food. People are going to be incredibly hungry for the, the truth of Jesus and the gospel. So I'm really excited for you guys and love partnering with you. Thank you. Pastor Anthony led the charge at Convoy of Hope Chicago for everyone who came to Marquette Park to get prayed for. So I really appreciate your leadership there, Pastor Anthony. I um, wanted to tell you, yesterday I was able to baptize four people and it was so exciting, but two of them, it really struck me. Uh, one young lady, so two teenagers and two young adults in their 20s, and this young lady, Michelle, she started watching our church online on Easter Sunday of this year. And then when we opened up on Father's Day, well, she came in July for the first time. First time she had ever stepped foot in the actual building, you know, and that very first Sunday, she gave her heart to Jesus. And it was just powerful. And she's just been growing by leaps and bounds. And then yesterday, she got baptized. It was awesome. <laughs> and then one of the young guys, Stefan, that I baptized yesterday, I had done this funeral, it seems like 10 years ago, but it was this past January, you know, during the, it was really cold. I remember that. Uh, at the graveside committal service, but I, I, uh, my neighbor's mother died, and they they asked me to officiate the wedding, so I did, and I I found out that you know this young man came, and I you know I knew, so I got to know him through my neighbor, and then he started coming to church just before the quarantine, and then he gave his heart to the Lord, and then he got baptized yesterday, so it's really cool to see you know what God is doing. And I want to encourage you, people need Christ. They need the Lord more than ever. But let me uh, just get into the message today. It's called Unimaginable Faith, and it's in this new Not-So-Normal series. And Not-So-Normal because these are really strange times. 
you know, there's an, there's an adjective you can say, that's so 2020, which means it's just so unexpected, you know, so unpredictable. And that's kind of how this year has been. But hang in there. It's uh, only 29 days to Election Day, however you feel about that. But let the redeemed of the Lord say so, and you should vote. Uh, 82 days until Christmas. There, that's a little better. And then 89 days until 2021, and this whole year is over. So let's use the rest of the year well as we live for the Lord. Um, it's been 16 months since I had emergency open heart surgery that you know, dramatically changed my life and a near death experience. And God has done so much since May 30, 2019. He's even though I, at times I've been physically weak, he's just been doing great things. I've been seeing more people come to Christ. We added, uh, we got a call one day, would you like to have a church building in Pilsen on Racine Avenue at 18th? And I said, yes, we would. <laughs> so we're renovating our Hope Church Pilsen and hope to have our, our grand opening uh, before the end of the year. And uh, we gotta, we're excited what God's doing. Uh, working with another church that wants to become a, a Hope Church, and uh, we just want to do all that we can for Jesus, and I'm very excited about that. Uh, so, you know, we've talked in this series about extraordinary flexibility and being flexible wineskins or uh, vessels to hold the, the work of God moving forward, and we've talked about uh, the abounding, boundless grace of God, but today, unimaginable faith, and I want to just develop that with you real quickly and encourage you, whatever you're going through, go through it with great faith in God. That's the only way to go through it. There really is no other way for believers to face life than with it, than you know, faith in God. So that, I've been hearing, you know, there's so much fear and there's so much anxiety and people are just stressed out and I see that and I've been doing a lot of counseling and it's, I've actually officiated six weddings in the last two months, so it's, it's great, but it's, it's not the newlyweds that are stressed, it's the people that have been married five, ten, you know, fifteen years, and, uh, you know, just got to continue to stand strong in their faith, but I really believe the move from fear-based living to faith-based living is the greatest move you can make right now in your life, and I want to just start with a short passage from the second to the last book in the Bible, really short book, just one chapter, it's Jude, uh, Jude, and Jesus had the same mother, uh, different fathers, but uh, here we read in Jude, we're just going to read three quick verses, they're, um, they're, in the Greek, they're called imperatives, they're just, they're really, you do this, you do this, and you do this, and they're very direct, okay? He says, build yourself up in your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Spirit and keeping yourself in the love of God. Be merciful to those who doubt and save others by snatching them from the fire. So he's just saying, you take responsibility and you build yourself up in your most holy faith. You keep praying in the Holy Spirit. And I love that. Pentecostal praying in tongues, praying, using the gifts of the Holy Spirit, praying in that intercessory gift. And you, and I love this one, keep yourself in the love of God. So you own it. And I, I just really think that's great when we see our children especially grow up and own the faith, right? And not just because mom or dad tell them to, but it is so important that we all do that. Grow up and we own the faith. And I'm going to give you four keys, real quick, four to unimaginable faith. Faith uh, without limit, faith beyond all measure. And the first one is simple. Grasp, really wrap your brain and heart and spirit around the biblical definition of faith. And I, when possible, I always want to have the Bible provide my definitions. And the Bible does. It says in Hebrews 11, verse 1, this definition. Faith is what? Let's look at it. Being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. That's the biblical definition of faith. But I do love the first two words there, now faith. And I want to encourage you to have a biblically defined now faith, faith for right now. And I know some of you may be going through very difficult things. I, I know that 
that has been my journey the last couple of years. Difficulties that I never would have expected in my life. And yet, through faith, I've been able to face them and overcome them. When, uh, you know, when you think about now faith in the Bible, a couple things about it. I would say, number one, true faith in God is amazing. It says in Matthew 8, 11, that when Jesus saw the faith of the centurion, he was amazed. There were other times he was amazed at people's lack of faith. An impact church, I want you to be a church that amazes people because of your faith and not your lack of faith, right? Amen. So it is amazing. Uh, this kind of faith overcomes the world. Now faith. Faith right now, no matter what you're facing. It says in 1 John 5, verse 4, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Your faith overcomes the world. It makes you an overcomer. People are either victims or they're victors. Which one are you? And I pray that you'll have an overcoming faith. Now faith pleases God. It says in Hebrews 11, verse 6, guess what? Without faith, it is what? Impossible to please God. Because if you come to God, you must believe that he's real, that he exists, and that he is a rewarder of those who earnestly, passionately seek him. And the last thing about this kind of biblical faith, it's a faith that believes for the impossible. It believes for the unimaginable. Many times Jesus said something like this, but in Mark 9, 23, he said, everything is possible for the person who believes. That's you, and that's biblical faith. So I wanted you to get that. Um, I, I love this uh, quote I'm going to show you here. I saw it on a sign when I lived in New England. Uh, Dawn and I were hiking around Walden Pond in New England, and uh, Henry David Thoreau wrote this. He was a writer in the 1800s. And it was just a, a short two to three mile hike around the pond. And they had some of his quotes on signs. And here's one, I, I love it. If one advances confidently in the direction of his dreams and endeavors to live the life which he has imagined, he will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. And that's what I'm talking about today, an unimaginable faith, a faith with no cap, no limit, a faith for everything you're going to face in this life that will take you into the next life, eternal life with Jesus. Second key I want to give you today is always, and remember this, always take the position of faith. If you say you're a follower of Jesus, there is no other tenable position. The only position for a son or daughter of God is the position of faith. What do I mean? Simply this. Everything about life with Jesus comes by faith. Everything in the kingdom of God is understood and obtained by faith. Faith is uh, the currency in the kingdom of God. And so you must always take the position of faith. I know sometimes life's can smack you down, and 2020 has been full of hit and runs and all kinds of getting broadsided and unexpected things, but always take the position of faith. No matter what you're facing, you will never go wrong. You will not have any regrets. You will if you doubt. You will if you're full of anxiety. But if you take the position of faith, you will win. You will overcome. Jesus uh uh, this is, you know, how Jesus is really related to and addressed people. When that same centurion uh, came to Jesus, that, you know, he said he was amazed by his faith, look what Jesus said to him. Uh, the centurion asked Jesus to heal his servant, and Jesus said that he would, and he just, and his servant was at home, uh, and he just said, I'm, well, I'm going to go home, and I, you know, I believe that he's healed. And Jesus said, go your way done for you, even as you had faith to believe. This is a very important principle in the Bible. What, what happens in your life is according to your faith. Jesus said this dozens of times. Uh, another time he said this in Matthew 9, 29. He's speaking to a blind person here. He said, according to your faith, it will be done to you. What are you expecting? I, my pastor for uh, 13 years of my life, great man of God who 
He taught so much to me and invested so much in me. He, he gave me a, a saying that I'll never forget. We get what we get ready for. What are you expecting? What are you getting ready for? We have a pastoral couple at our church, Pastor Josh and Rachel, and they have just were believing God for a baby, and, and God has provided, and Rachel's eight months pregnant. And the other day, Josh showed me that they had finished their baby room. And I love that when, when couples get ready for a new baby and they, they get the room ready and they had a little library. They know it's a boy, by the way. So library and everything was, he said, it's all done. How about you? What are you believing for today? I want to encourage you to believe for great things. No matter what anybody has said to you, no matter what has happened to you, you know, it doesn't matter. It, what, only, what matters is what God has said to you. But he has revealed to you in his word. And that is um, the third thing. The third key is to tap into the source of faith daily. You may be wondering, you know, where do I get this biblical faith? And there's a key teaching in the Bible. I hope you know it in Romans 10, 17. Say it with me. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I can kind of hear you with your face mask on, but say it, say it to yourself. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. But how are you going to have faith if you're not in the Word of God? This is a huge problem in the church today. There's so much biblical illiteracy. Now, my wife Dawn and I, we grew up, our dads both did something. We thought everybody in America did it. And then when we grew up and went to college, we found out hardly anybody does it. But guess what? Our fathers read the Bible to us every day. And that's the greatest gift my, my dad could give me. That's really all I have to offer. I am, I am not a person of a lot of talents, but I am a man of the word. I have been taught the Bible from my youngest years. And uh, my parents sent me to a Christian school. The first hour of the day for 12 years was Bible. And I have learned to love the Bible. But faith comes by getting into the word of God. You gotta dive into it. You gotta plunge into it. You gotta start the day with it. And you know, the the man of God, Job, he said this in Job twenty three, verse twelve. He said, I have treasured the words of God's mouth more than my daily bread. And that's how it needs to be. Because Jesus said, What? Man does not live by bread alone, but by the every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That means word a living word that you're getting fresh, fresh bread every day. And I really want to encourage you to uh, get into the word. Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 15, he said, When your words came, I ate them, O Lord, and they were my heart's joy and my heart's desire. So there is a really clear sense that the word is your spiritual food. And some of you are probably spiritually anemic. You're just, there's no meat on you because you are not digging into the meat of God's Word. And the way to acquire this biblical faith, this faith that will transform everything about your life, is to tap into it every day. My wife is an early riser. Dawn gets up at just unmentionable hours, you know. I, the other day, I, I am reaching for her, and I'm going, she's not there, and I check my watch, it's 3.55. And she's downstairs praying and getting into the Word. And then I see she completed another Bible study on the Bible app. And, you know, she's like, uh, you know, just has this hunger for God's Word. But that's because in 2012, my wife had a life-changing experience. She got a diagnosis of cancer, and, and that led to surgery and a removal of, of all her lymph nodes. And just a really, really horrid year. You know, just... 2012 and 2020, yeah, they're, you know, kind of a toss-up. And that, what she did after that said everything to me about who she is. She just went deeper into God. She went deeper into God's Word. She led more people to Christ. And she is the director of Convoy of Hope Chicago. She's our missions director. And like you guys, we have just done mission or uh, outreaches. Uh, as soon as the governor's uh, stay-at-home order was in effect, we turned our church into a food warehouse. It looked like Costco, no kidding. They had it set up with aisles, with signs, 
and we 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 started doing porch drops for anybody in our neighborhood, the elderly, uh, young parents uh, who couldn't get out to get baby diapers, whatever. And we just kept on doing it. And God just kept on blessing. It was just, uh, just amazing stuff. You know, and we just would go into God's word and see that our, our job right now is to show his compassion. There are three things I think God is doing in America right now in the American church. We must always preach the gospel and never, uh, never stop. And that must be something we do with every ounce of our being. But I am so thankful about 40 or 50 years ago, I saw the church really begin to understand its ministry and compassion. And that we, we, we have to, you know, back up what we say with what we do and to get out in the, in the streets like Pastor Anthony and Tracy and so many of you and, and just feed people and love people and pray with people. But I do think that, that there's going to be a third thing. And it's not something to be uh, afraid of or point fingers at, but I believe that the, God is going to also bring back to the church a message which we should have been preaching all along, and that is on justice and racial reconciliation. And I, I have been working a lot in that area. Uh, you know, when... when George Floyd was murdered on, on May 29. That was my 60th birthday. And I started that day with a food distribution in Pilsen with the aldermen there. And yet, since that day, I've been working tirelessly. I oversee 24 churches on the south side of Chicago to work with pastors to bring justice and to see the kind of reconciliation that Christ wants to see in society where there is true freedom and equality and respect. And I believe that that is really important for the church to do. Because if the church, if the church isn't busy about that, who else, what other group, what other entity or, or institution is going to bring people together? You know, I see in my own church, you know, we have people from this, this party and that party. We have... The state director of public health, Dr. Azike, is a good friend of ours and a member of our church in LaGrange. And we can come together in the name and love of Jesus and preach the gospel and treat people right and make sure that uh, our society is a society where everyone is, is loved and treated I, uh, uh, with, with respect that they deserve. And that is a big thing, I think, that going to happen in the church in the next 10 years. Just keep your eye on it. It's exciting. It's biblical. He has shown you, oh man, what is good? What does the Lord require of us? But to love justice, to show mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. The Bible says righteousness and justice are the foundation of God's throne. God is into justice. We should too. Okay, third, I want to just... Um, I think I gave you third, fourth, and the last one. I just want to encourage you today, as your response to this message, to release this unimaginable power of faith. That means I want you to actually take it like a, a magnifying glass or a laser beam, the faith that is inside of you. So all of you have this breath of life inside of you. You have the energy that God put inside of you. Some, So many people are using that energy to... to worry and just be angry and frustrated and depressed. I am asking you to use that emotional, spiritual capacity inside of you to believe God for great things right where you need them. I had uh, a week ago, Saturday, I, I uh, was in my office in my house and I got the most painful, sharp headache out of nowhere. It was in my right in my, uh, above my right eyebrow, and that is where I had a stroke, which caused me to be uh, paralyzed for a few days and, and then have a, a lot of <laughs> uh, paralysis and left side weakness. And it was right in that area where they, you know, the CT scan showed this point of impact where a piece of plaque hit the motor function side on the right side of my brain that controls the left side of my body. And, and for like 15 seconds, I was like, oh, this is one of the sharpest pains I've ever had. And then I thought, oh, no. You know, 
know, and then I, it kind of faded. So I, I, I read my Bible, I did a little bit of work in my office, I came out, Dawn was watching a movie, and so I was watching the movie with her, and I had this annoying habit, because I haven't been able to feel my left calf for 16 months, since May 29, 2019, and I always dig my fingernails in there and see if I can feel anything. And I dug it in there, and I went, ooh. You know, and, I, and, and then I kept digging, and I go, wow. And then I started feeling this sensation. And then I started feeling, you know, feelings I hadn't felt in my, in my knee and in my calf, my foot and my toes. And then I, I screamed, and I have, not, I have not jumped and gotten air in 16 months. And I got off the ground. <laughs> and, and then... So, and then I started feeling, you know, a lot of sensations because my, my muscles, had, I don't know what happened a week ago, but they started firing up again. And I just started ugly crying. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> and she's like walk, looking at me like I'm losing it, you know. And then I started walking real fast. And then I walked up the stairs in her house, and I, they had to put, build all these rails in her house. And I walked up without using the handrails. And then I started, you know, doing loops on our main level. And then I said, Dawn, let's go for a walk. And then we went for the first walk was where I actually walked fast, you know, in 16 months. So, it, you know, I tell you, God is a God of miracles, and my faith is for complete recovery. And I thank God for that big breakthrough and a good week. And, you know, I don't know what you need to put your faith in, but I want to encourage you to have a faith that is beyond uh, imagination, beyond limits. And this is very biblical. Let me show you. I'm almost done here. Ephesians 3, verse 20. It's a really interesting passage because in the middle of Ephesians, which is Paul's letter to the mature church, it's got things like spiritual warfare and unity and, and marriage and things like that. Right in the middle, he writes the benediction. He writes a blessing. He rarely does that. He only did that twice in 13 letters. And I hope you're reading your Bible. I hope you're reading Paul's letters. You know, Paul wrote 13 of the 27 New Testament books. And right in the middle of it, not at the end, he gives the blessing. Look at it. He says, now to him who is able to, Im to do immeasurably more than all we ask, or what? Imagine. That is where the unimaginable comes from. Beyond your imagination, according to the power that is at work within us, inside of you, the Holy Ghost inside of you, the God, the same Spirit that breathed those scriptures, that, that moved on the authors of the Bible, that same Spirit lives in you. And the Word of God that He quickened for them to write down, He makes it alive in you. It's at work in you. Is it at work in you? If not, you need to put it to work. You need to release the great power of God inside of you. And I'll end with two charges. God is calling us to exercise unimaginable faith right now. This will be faith from the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God, because these are not so normal times. This means this is not a time for Christians to uh, hunker down and just hang out in their home. This is a time for us to be about the, the Father's business. Jesus, Jesus is looking for people who will do his will in all the earth. And when he comes back, and I hope it's soon, I want him to find me and you uh, doing his work. Jesus said, when I come back, will I find faith on the earth? And we say, yes, Lord, in me, Lord, in my family, Lord, in my marriage, Lord. And then Impact Church, I believe, is called to be a people of great faith. What else could you do? You know, sometimes when you're challenged from the Bible, you've got to look at the alternative. What's the alternative to faith and confidence and really uh, believing and trusting God? It's hideous things like worry, doubt, cravening fear, those kinds of things. So you don't want to go to the ugly alternative. You want to be right back where Jude started us out. Build yourself up in your most holy faith. Keep on praying in the Holy Ghost and keep yourself in the love of God. Be merciful to people you don't agree with. I heard a, one of, a great pastor from the south side this week say, look, 
whatever party you belong to, you need to be speaking truth to your party. You need to be speaking the truth of God's word. You need, as the Bible says, speak the truth in love. Don't just, don't just have an idea. Speak up. Speak up for the truth of God's word, but do it with love. And this is a time for Impact Church to rise up. You've got a great foundation, three years. But you can't stay at three years old, right? You've learned to walk. You know, you, you've had a massive impact in Maywood. You have, many have come to Christ. They haven't all stayed here. But uh, I just believe your future is an even greater ingathering of souls, a greater impact for, with the love of God, and a greater impact for the kind of justice that God wants to see, the kingdom of God here on earth, and, and that the future is incredibly bright for you. And I don't know what you need to release your faith for right now, I just want you to close your eyes. You're facing financial difficulty. God can change that in a moment. Do it. I got home from vacation while well, your eyes are closed. I got home from vacation and wondering about finances for our church. And I had a, this very legal looking, threatening letter on my desk. And I nervously opened it up and found out that a woman who a few years ago gave her heart to the Lord at her church had donated $19,000 cash to our church. <laughs> God took care of that, you know. She also donated her 1999 Cavalier to somebody. I was so glad she didn't donate that to the church, you know, that <laughs> she donated the cash. I remember when she gave her heart to Jesus. God can do it. God can do it. Maybe for your marriage. So many strained marriages right now. God can rekindle a love for that husband, that wife. Maybe a parental concern. God can touch your child. Remember, he's, he's the God in the prodigal son story. He can do it. If today you're facing an incredible difficulty or challenge possibility in your life and you want to just release your faith for God to move in that situation just raise your hands all over this room. I got both of mine up I have so many big challenges I'm facing right now so near and dear to my heart people I just need Jesus God you see our hands lifted up Right now, just give it to God. Say, God, move. Move in my son. Move in my daughter. Move in our marriage. Release the finances. Send protection. Some of you, you need direction. You can't afford to make another bad decision. And I'm praying right now, you will never make another bad decision for the rest of your life. Believe it today. No more bad, big decisions or even little ones. That God will guide you along a clear path. Release your faith today. God, I trust you. Give it to him. Give it to him. God, I trust you. Huge things I'm facing. The Bible didn't say worry about your mountain. The Bible didn't say get overwhelmed and, and, and just distraught about your mountain. The Bible says, speak to that mountain and say, be thou removed, be thou cast into the heart of the sea. And the Bible says, whatever you ask for in prayer and faith believing, it shall be done. That's why faith is so important. And the greatest release of faith, well, or the first initial release is for your salvation. If you're here today, you're not living for God, I tell you what, the signs of the times are everywhere. And these are, these are disturbing times. That's why we're preaching on these great themes of the Bible. If you need to come back to God or come to Christ for the first time, the Bible says, in your heart you should enthrone Christ as Lord. In 1 Peter 3.15. I've heard it said, every heart with Jesus is a missionary. And every heart without Jesus is a mission field. Which one are you? And if today is the day the Bible calls the day of your salvation, I want to lead you in a prayer.
prayer of committing your life to Jesus. I'm going to put it up on the screen here. It's a simple prayer, and I'm going to ask you to pray it in your heart with me. This is a prayer. I prayed it when I was 16. Sometimes called the sinner's prayer. The biggest and best decision of my life. Would you, <clears throat> would you all pray it with me, and especially those of you who are giving your hearts to Jesus today? Jesus, I put my faith in you. Say that with me. Jesus, I put my faith in you. I give you my life. I'm sorry for all my sins, and I ask you to forgive me. I confess you are my Lord and Savior. That's so important. Let's do it again. I confess you are my Lord and Savior. We're about to have communion. Some of you maybe for the first time, and that confession is so important. Confess, you are my Lord. Pray this with me. Make me a new person. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. I want to live for you the rest of my days. Pray it in your great name. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You close your eyes and just in this moment, if that's you today, and you are praying that prayer, the prayer of salvation, this is your day, and, and we just want to rejoice with you. But I'm going to ask you to, if you prayed that prayer in your heart, Jesus, I'm giving you my life. I'm turning from all sin. I'm going to live for you the rest of my days. I want you to just raise your hand across this room. If you prayed that prayer, you just raise your hand and say, that's me, Pastor. I gave my heart to Christ today. I am just trusting him for the rest of my days. For anybody in this room, today is your day that you've given your heart to Jesus. Thank God. You'd all look up out here. We're going to transition now into communion. Communion is for all believers. Uh, I turn it over to Pastor Anthony, but so good to be with you, and I can't wait to see what the next three years bring. It'll be great. Thank you, Pastor Hill, for that awesome sermon. Give it up for Pastor Hill. So without faith, we can't do much. We can't. If you don't believe in something, it's kind of hard to move forward in anything. And he, he's so right. It's, to have communion means that you believe in Christ. That means you believe in what he did for you on the cross, that he, he suffered and he died and he was buried and he was raised. And that means you're having communion with him. That means you're, you're getting real with him. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to get real with him. All right, so we believe in open communion at Impact Church, okay? That means if you are a believer, if you have prayed that prayer, if you've decided at any time in your life and said, Lord, I need you and I want you, then you are more than welcome to have communion with us, okay? So do you guys all have your elements? And if you're watching online, go get your coffee, your water, your tea, whatever, your crackers. If you don't have them, we'll, we'll be more than happy to give them to you. Sorry you didn't get them when you came in. So go grab them. That, that people at home, too, go grab them. You got them? I probably should open mine because I always have trouble doing this. There was a, there's a story in the Bible, right? It's not a story. Uh, it, it, Jesus sat with his 12 disciples. And Pastor Hanlon, you said something early in the sermon about fishing for men. And yesterday, I had the oppor a great opportunity to partner with uh, Connie Wade and Gales and uh, District 88, Bellwood District 88 School, to bring youth out to fish with us and have a fishing day with these beautiful young eighth graders. We didn't catch anything. We didn't, right? But, and this is, see, but this is, this is what you said, though. I'm going to make you a fisher for man. Because that's literally the story that I was telling them. And I said, Peter was fishing one day and didn't catch anything, and he told them to go to the other side and fish on that side. And Peter was like, I don't want to do that. I've been out all night. But yet he still did it. And then right after that, they caught all these fish. And he says, I'm going to make you fishers for men. So what you said about being fishers for men is totally true and end point. Because that's all he's been putting into my head 
that we need to go fishing. We need to go cast the net. But it starts with your salvation. So if you believe in Christ, I want you to pick this up. And I want you to hold it. Because he says, as they were eating, they were eating. The night he was about to die, he, did, he ate with his friends. He had communion with them. And he says, as they were eating, he took the bread and he blessed it. We're going to pray over this in a second. Then he broke it into pieces and he gave it to the disciples and said, take this and eat this. This is my body. This is a representation of what it is. This is in his body. His body's alive. It's not a piece of paper. It's not a, a wafer. His body's alive inside of us, his spirit. Amen? Raise this up. Lord, thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for breaking your bones, your body for us and our salvation. In Jesus' name, amen? Amen. Then he took the cup, it says. And he says, he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. And he gave them it and he said, you take it, you drink from it. For this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. And he poured it out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. He didn't do it just for one person. He sacrificed for the world. That means every single one of us sitting here, everyone watching this, there had to be a sacrifice. And it was his son that sacrificed and gave his life to show his love for us. Amen? Raise it up. Jesus, thank you for your sacrifice of salvation. That we can, that you, you, you put yourself in the gap for us so we could have communion with our maker. Amen? Amen. We'll clean those up when you get up. Throw them away. Just wait. Lord, I, just, I, I, I want to thank you all for being here today. I want to thank Pastor Helen and Don. You got a special gift in there. You actually got a wristband today, and you're all going to get a wristband. It says, I'm impact, you're impact, we're impact. Because that's what we believe. God is our, our founder of this, this church. Amen? But you make up his church, and us together can go out and fish for men and, and impact the world. Amen? So we have a spot. Hey, yeah, you can clap, Persephone. You can clap, Persephone. Amen. Hey, I want to close out in a, in a prayer, and then we can go get your gifts at the, at the back door. Father God, I just thank you again just for this time to be with you, to be in your presence, to have your spirit with us, and I thank you for the salvation of Jesus Christ, your son that you loved us so much that you sent him and he, to save a wreck like me and so many other people, Father God. Keep digging into our souls, Father. Look at our souls. Find our hearts, Father, and guide us, lead us, and love us all our days. Lord, let us be your hands and feet on this earth so we can glorify your name through our good deeds and give you all the praise and glory. Lord, watch over us as we go throughout this week. Bring... Uh, divine appointments to us, Father God, to find who you are, to be able to speak who you are. Bless each and every one here today, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Miss Regina, would you please stand up? I'm going to... Miss Regina, you guys don't know Miss Regina. Maybe you do. But Miss Regina is from God's Heritage Church, Ministry Church. And give her five for... I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> Right now, her service is going on, but we partnered with her a couple months ago, right? About five, six months ago, and her organization and church uh, help us with the food food distributions. They, we use her church, her volunteers. They are awesome. You guys are such a blessing, and and that's you truly are. I love you to death, and I, I thank you for all your wisdom and knowledge you pour into me too. But that's what Impact stands for. Involve many people and create teamwork. See, we can't do this alone. We need him at the helm guiding us to impact the world through teamwork. Amen? Go enjoy. Thank you for being here. We love you all. Remember, B-A-B, -B, be a blessing. <laughs>